New Year, same Mastara. Welcome fellow known worlders to the first video of the year as part of a double feature. Because we're trying to get a video out for Christmas, turns out to be a nightmare. This time around we are looking at skyships of Mastara. Because when your planet's about 25% mountains, you get tired of walking really fast. But who has skyships? Who builds them? And more importantly, who pays for them? Well, time to learn. I'm Mr. Welch, and I hate falling behind. Mastara probably has the most number of skyships in a D&D &D setting, dwarfing that of even Eberron. This is largely in part to two reasons. First, Mastara has been around a lot longer, so has established skyships in quite a few nations. And second, Bruce Heard really likes skyships. Alphacia has so many skyships that large buildings have docking ports so people don't have to actually touch the ground. Glantry is a small force of skyships, which are more practical than artistic. Alphacians want to sail the sky and see the world. Glantrians just prefer to get a better view of the area they're about to turn into crunchy glass. Numerous adventurers have their own personal skyships, and most nations have at least one available, either officially or through backdoor channels. To start, the definition of a skyship is a flying vehicle, no larger than a sailing ship, that is created with magic and powered either by magic or through mundane methods to sustain its lift and its flight. The city of Serene, while an impressive marvel in its own right, is too large to be considered an airship. Still, it speaks volumes to Mistar and Gnomish ingenuity to make a Blackmore device functional and not vaporize half the known world. More so, they kept it stable and powered their city with it. Again, hats off to the Mastara Sky Gnomes for actually being very good at their jobs. Suck it, Kren! The first thing you will notice about Mastara and skyships is the plethora of design options. Unlike Eberron, there's more than one way to create a skyship. Most are just sailing vessels that have been enchanted to gain lift. Others are mechanical constructs that are built to appear as living creatures. Others resemble chariots pulled by flying monsters. The possibilities are left to the player's imaginations. Of course, thinking one up and actually building one are two different things. And the first thing you will discover is skyships are expensive. First, you have to enchant your skyship. Calculate the square footage, and then you enchant it. Every so many square feet, you have to cast one of the form spells depending on the material being used. The starting cost to enchant the hull is 3,000 gold pieces per spell level per 1,000 square feet, or 500 square feet for the iron form spell. I didn't include the form spells in the Mastara Player's Guide because they are of limited function and they're frankly kind of boring. But that means wood form costs 18,000 gold pieces of casting, stone form 21,000, and iron form 24,000. And iron form again costs twice as much because it only enchants half as much. To enhance the spell magically, it costs 2,000 per level per section. You can use enchantment spells to make the frame lighter, so when you land your iron battleship in Miros Bay, it doesn't immediately bottom out. But that does jack up the price to 32,000 gold pieces per section. The price of an airship can easily reach over a million gold pieces. So go run through Saber River a few times to save up. Once you've spent a million gold pieces just to get the skyship started, then you have to call in the small army of engineers, designers, wizards, and shipbuilders to create it. And you thought you spent a lot of money on the spells. The known world has entire shipyards devoted to building skyships. Mostly in Alphacia, but the gnomes have one in an unspecified region, and the artificers of Glantry and Rockholm have been known to build more than a few skyships themselves. The importance of the skyship engineer can't be overstated. The last thing you want to see on a skyship's maiden voyage is watching it plummet out of the sky with all the crew screaming to their deaths, well, except for the ship's captain who teleports safely in mid-plummet. These engineers are so vital to Alphacia that they have a section of their engineering university devoted just to arcane engineering. If your kid wants to be an arcane engineer, let them. Those guys get to dictate their salary. Construction of a skyship can take weeks to months. The more complicated and elaborate designs can take over a year from concept to completion. The more magical it is, obviously, the longer it takes. The further away from Alphacia you get, the harder it gets to have a skyship constructed quickly, simply because the sky yards are mostly located in Alphacia. Outside of that empire, assume every skyship is a unique creation. While gnomish skyships are all custom jobs made to the buyer's exact specifications, you can buy an Alphacian skyship off the rack. They probably have skyship dealerships akin to high-end sports car dealerships in real life. So if you need a good quality skyship with lots of cargo room for taking the kids to hardball practice, just swing on by the Crazy Valor's Youth Skyship Emporium. The sheer expanse of building a skyship is what keeps their numbers down, obviously. There's nothing stopping Thyatis from building a fleet of skyships to compete with Alphacia, but for the price of one ship, they can hire half a dozen dragons to fight for them for years. Most skyships are vanity projects, paid for by either wealthy nobles looking to show off, successful merchants trying to make a greater fortune moving small cargo faster, or veteran adventurers who got tired of walking. All of these skyships are unique, custom built to the specifications unique to the customer. But not all skyships are built this way. There are a few created from a uniform pattern for ease of production. 
The gnomes of Serene use magical airplanes, which do fit the definition of skyship, if just barely. They use actual physics to fly, though they are powered with magic. They're built in Serene by the gnomes and come in one of four designs. They have the Top Cat and Pole Cat fighters, the Sky Ratchet fighter bomber, and the Sky Clipper transports. These are used to defend the city and to ferry supplies and tourists to and from Serene. The cost to build an airplane is greatly reduced because the gnomes have started using assembly line manufacturing to lower costs. But these ships are never built for outsiders, so the party has to go and get their discount somewhere else. The Heldonic Order has created a series of skyships with the help of their immortal patron Vanya. These skyships, called Prowlers, get around the construction rules through divine means. They are powered by a single artifact. The ships themselves don't have to be enchanted like normal skyships. The artifact can power up to 40 skyships, giving the order a sizable fleet, though the ships lack the special defenses other skyships possess. They are warships without question, and if one is destroyed, the artifact can power up another one immediately. Because of the unique property of the skyships, the order guards their artifact to the death. If someone were to steal it, the Heldonic Order's most powerful weapons would be grounded. The most famous skyship in Mastara, without question, is the Princess Ark. Owned by Prince Haldemar of Haken, it's obviously the subject of the Voyage of the Princess Ark series. It's actually part creature, being possessed by the psyche of the Elder Skyrim Berylith, who doesn't always listen to Haldemar's orders. Not saying she does what she wants, I'm just saying that before you hit her with a disintegrate spell, you better have all your affairs in order. She has explored the coast of Northern Devania, been to the Hollow World, and fought the Heldonic Order across three continents, and she will be getting her own video later. The Airship of Love is one of the largest skyships in all of Mistara, a massive passenger ship that makes a weekly cruise of the islands surrounding the nation of Gaiety in Alphacia. It is designed for comfort, with copious amounts of amenities and services available on board for a price. While known for its opulence, it's also well guarded, and those who know about its built-in defenses know to stay well away from it. The passengers are quite wealthy, so no expense is spared to defend them. Plus, interrupting vacationing archmages with petty piracy isn't exactly helping your life expectancy. Still, if your players want a break, the Airship of Love will be making another run. The Airship of Love promises something for everyone. The Dragonfly of Doom is a mass-produced war machine created for Prince Volaspin of Glantry. Similar to an ornithopter, these skyships were created to fight dragons over a valuable mineral pocket, which also served as the dragonfly's fuel. It has enormous wands of magic missiles and fires meteor swarms from its front gun to fight the dragons. Originally, there were entire squadrons of dragonflies used to hunt these dragons, much to Prince Yager's chagrin, but dragons are very dangerous foes, and soon the dragonflies were reduced to just a dozen. The war itself ended when the mines for the minerals dried up, leaving nothing for the dragons or the prince. There's still a dozen dragonflies in service, but their fuel is finite, and they are only used in dire emergencies now. The flying barge of Seir Ulan is a perfect example of how the cost of creating a skyship can spiral out of control. Chandra Ul Nervi, the Raja de Raja of Sindh, is known for being a wasteful man, and when he heard of the wonder that was the Princess Ark, he wanted to build his own skyship, only bigger and grander. The flying barge is just that a large flat barge that can magically fly through the air. It can also carry cargo or troops, but usually just Chandra's retinue. The barge is covered with gold and gems, and the decorations for it cost over a million gold pieces, half the total cost of the ship. It has minimal defenses for a structure of its size. It's more of a monument to Chandra's vanity rather than any practical use. The Ostduke gnomes of the Hollow World have a stock skyship design that uses only a single fire elemental for power. These are giant dirigibles, perfect for life aboard their floating continent. The gas bags use heated air to stay aloft, while the controls are done from the engineering section in the gondola below. The ships are usually only for transport. The gnomes have little need for weapons as none of the primitive cultures below them are a threat. While the airships are designed from a single pattern, the gnomes make it a point to customize each of the ships to improve upon the design with a variety of unique and often ill-advised modifications to increase performance. The Concordia is the first airship built by Karamikos, as Stefan felt the need to have some sort of aerial craft in his nation. The ship itself is nothing special, it's just a stock sailing ship enchanted to fly. The cost of the vessel was a staggering 2.5 million gold pieces, which many in Karamikos believe is a huge waste of resources. Stefan's desires that the Concordia explores vast portions of Mastara that still have never been fully mapped, as he's trying to establish his nation as somewhere worthy of notice. Still, the number of doubters wondering if there's another, cheaper method to improve the reputation of their country is growing. The Spill World Explorer is being built as a joint venture between Thyatis and Alphacia to explore the realm known as Spill World. There's not much known about the area except that it's comprised of numerous worlds that all exist in close orbit to each other. The Explorer is not the official name of the yet unchristian ship, but it's the common title given to it by those working on the project. 
The Explorer resembles an aircraft carrier and is designed to carry smaller Alphatian skyships and support a full company of the Rotebius Air Fleet. Whether this project will ever see completion depends on the tenuous relations between the empires, but so far results have been promising. Skyships can serve any number of purposes in your campaign. If nothing else, they're a plot device to get the characters quickly from one adventure to the next. If you have players that have more money than time, like every adventurer in 5th edition after 6th level, it's a great way to get excess gold out of the game. If you need bad guys to show up unexpectedly, send them with a skyship. Just make sure the skyship blows up spectacularly if you want to keep it out of the hands of the players, of course. If you want an episodic campaign, then just have the skyship serve as a framing device, where wherever it stops, that's where the adventure is. And that's it for skyships. Next week we are looking at the most infamous villain in all of Dungeons & Dragons. Everybody's favorite psychotic chaotic, Bargle the Infamous. Until then, set a course for adventure. Your mind on a new romance.